Echo Base Network, Coach Nick, I love you guys. You've always supported me. You've done great. You've made documentaries. You've done amazing content. You've set the bar as far as YouTube is concerned. And I love you. We are broadcasting live from the Echo Base Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Convention with the great <laughs> DA, the DA, Derek. That's right, that's right. Mention hey, Iron Man in the house. We're outside the uh, live music bar where we've done a meetup with Film Threat, Latino Slant. There's Latino Slant. Hello, my name's Tim Rose, and I'm with you here at Echo Base today. I've had a great time, and I played Admiral Akbar in Return of the Jedi, The Force Awakens, and finally in The Last Jedi. But the one thing that I seem to be remembered more than anything else is it's a drop. Echo Base Network. Uh, yeah, don't come on the show and act like you're you're like, you know, you can be nice to Santa, and that's cool, but don't go and try to do hit pieces on me and Megan and show up like it's all cool. You're kind of a dick, all right? Uh, Echo Base Network. Hail, Echo Base. We're going to give you a right, 50. Thanks, brothers. Go subscribe to Echo Base Network. Uh, thoughts on the Cat Williams interview with Shannon Sharp. There were some uh, juicy takes in that thing. FYI, fuck Disney Star Wars and uh, and hire Ch- uh, and this hire of Shinoi. Uh, hail to all of you and keep up the great work, guys. You too as well. Cheers. Coach and Nick. I could do my coach impression. I got to prepare for it, though. This is uh, Echo Base Network, and we're here to talk about s- Star Wars. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That is not funny.
Echo Today from Echo Base Network. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight at Echo Base TV, where community happens. Tonight's show is going to be a spicy one. Disney, Bob Iger, and all those stupid mother... N-O, N-O, no, 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 no. N-O, N-O, no, 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 no. N-O, N-O, no, 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 no. N-O, N-O, no, no, no. You're welcome. Hi. That's kind of a joker hi, isn't it? Hi. Nick ain't here yet. Neither is the DA. Let's get you in here. Hi. <laughs> We're starting out with the no no song. Boy, we God hadn't heard that dang, in a minute. Man. Let me tell you something. Here's the most important thing we're going to find out tonight Flaming Hot Cheetos. Oh, no. I wonder what you were going they on. They ain't lying. Look how hey. red my tongue is. I am drinking this drink way too fast. Oh, it might get bad tonight. <laughs> too funny. Yeah, you're back there doing this. That's like, what are you eating? <laughs> Man, God, they're killing me. Hey, everybody. We got a great, well, I don't know if we got a great show lined up or not. We have an opportunity for a great show tonight. Many things to discuss and talk about. Thank you guys for being here. Let's see who we got in chat. We have Everscale, Binger, Humphrey Bear, USS Cushing, Rogue Sarge, Daryl the Derelict, Angelina Serini, Papa Palpatine's Pizza, Padawan. Hey, you, Matt Risman, Lombardi, 1969, Davish, my man, Mary Lanning, Brandon the Anime, man, Brandon the Anime Guy, Alan Copeland, 
Felix Kiros, what is up, Felix? Great to see you. Jedi Master Lawrence, Emily Kruger, Debbie Debra, Mama Bear, Debbie Does Dallas Young. Yes. D. Curie, the wonderful Star Wars mom. Special hello to my good friend, X-Wing. Lurking in chat, he is here. He even posted on Twitter today. Great to see my friend. He will be making a big Star Wars return in the YouTube space when things heat up. Congratulations to him and his little princess and family. Very happy uh, for the family. K. Crux, Andrew Wall, GraphWeb, Low Spec Linux Laptop, Rito Saurus. Rito Saurus. What is up, man? That's a great name. I probably. I probably jacked it up too. Uh, C West B12. Rob writes Gen X pop culture. What's up, Rob? Great to see you. Kathleen Kennedy is worse than AIDS. Whoa, I missed that one. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that. Don't, don't look too long at that PFP. <laughs> what is going on? What is up? Oh my. Woo. Yeesh. I see tonight. Yeesh. Hey guys, we got so many things to talk about. Like, he here's a rundown. Risman and I worked hard to put this agenda together. Every time I turned around, Risman was adding stuff to it, so it's yeah. going to be a big one. Uh, let's see. We're going to start off looking at the Tales of the Empire trailer. Uh, Angelina Serini, Matt Risman, and some other people were kind enough to all send it my way when it dropped, and I appreciate all that. I didn't watch it. Nick watched it. You watched it. I'm sure the DA watched it. He's nothing but a nerd. <laughs> I'm going to watch it live right here. However, I do know the two main people that it's about the season. So, And I have some opinions there, but I want to see it before I share my opinion. Because my opinion could change. I don't know. little acolyte update. I know everybody's chomping at the bit for that. Uh, Disneyland has canceled or Disney, Disney has canceled a huge Star Wars project very quietly. We're going to look at that. Uh, a little bit of gaming news considering Star Wars, and a little bit about Bob Iger and his comments and how he just basically lied to thousands of people. More than once. It was what? Well, it was the same interview. It was the same interview. <laughs> Lies. I mean, blatant, boldface, like, this is a lie. There's so much evidence to the contrary. What I'm saying right now is a lie. Like, <laughs> this ain't 1940. We got media. We got everything you've said in the last decade. You lying. Um, let's see. The original Alien coming back to a theater. How about it? About 900 about miles from you, probably. No, I bet you it'll be in every theater. I bet you. I hope so. My I gosh. Bet. I hope it's that cleaned up 4K edition that just came I'm, out. I'm expecting it will be. I hope I'm so. That's be. worth a watch. Uh, Denny Villeneuve has kicked off Dune 3. Big shock, but awesome. Uh, female Silver Surfer. Mm. The main antagonist in uh, the new Final Four reboot. Reacher star Alan Richardson wants to be Batman. X-Men 97 so far, after four episodes. What's going on with Sam Raimi and Spider-Man 4? And the last thing, we'll leave off with Nick, because he's the only one that cares. IGN offers an official apology for attacking Stellar Blade director. We, we'll never make it that far. We'll ne <laughs> it's not a chance we're making it that far. <laughs> not when the DA shows up. <laughs> Not a chance in hell. <laughs> DA gets going. I'm like, damn, I just found a new gray hair. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I can't wait for my man to show up. Um, he's probably in that LA traffic right now. But uh, yeah, we got a lot of things <clears throat> that we're going to be going through. Oh, well, speak of the devil and he shall appear. What's up, everybody?
Mighty Derek Anderson, the DA. And real quick, before we get started, Derek. Yo, yo, what's going on, fellas? Flaming Hot Cheetos are no joke. Flaming Hot Cheetos. I mean Doritos. 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 They will burn your ass to the ground. Why are you? <laughs> what's going on with that, man? I, I Why know. would you even eat that stuff? Oh, my goodness. Yo, my, I couldn't my, I, my daughter bought it, and uh -huh. they were too hot for her, so I got a handful of them right <laughs> as the pre-show was coming to an end, and I am, like, panicking because I can't talk. Uh, but, hey. We're here. A lot yeah. to talk about tonight. Man, a whole lot to talk about. What have you guys been talking about so far? I literally just ran in the house right now and turned everything on. We were talking about Lizzo the Hut and that beautiful butt picture. Uh, no, we were not. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was about to click off. Like, okay, that's the topics for today. I'm out. Bye. <laughs> but she did Man. quit. She did quit and unquit within the space of two days. I thought yeah, that she did. That was yeah. kind of I said, wait a minute. People are unfollowing me in droves. I got to fix this. Look, man, these guys are always like just playing to the to the drama. And, you know, it's like they're not serious people, man. Nobody in Hollywood is a serious person. They just want to build up drama, build up hype, you know, try to get a narrative going so they could feel like a victim or whatever the case may be. That's just yeah. how these cats are. It's nothing. It's nothing real about Hollywood. That's the saddest thing. It's like, you know, when people are looking for some escapism. You know, we go to Hollywood, but then there's nothing. They, these people are just not authentically able to entertain us anymore. You know, back in the day, you had like real entertainers. Now you just have drama queens everywhere. Exactly. Yeah. So well said. Well, before we get into our opening topic, just real fast. I know you guys already know it. Four ways to support the channel. You can join us over in our membership area. We got four different levels of EBN membership offering those perks as things get heat up, heated up here in the near future, we are definitely going to be uh, doing much more member pop-ins. We got a members live stream that Nick and I believe we are going to be doing tomorrow night, Friday night. Uh, but we'll talk about that later. That's just, hey, pencil that in. That's subject to change. But what I can guarantee you is it will not be happening on Sunday. It will not be happening on Sunday. Uh, but we, it is time to do a member stream. So uh, let's see. Join us on Patreon, where we got all kinds of things. I posted five audiobooks last week, a couple documentaries. We got The Bad Batch uh, coming out. We got X-Men 97 coming out. You can watch along with us as we react to it and discuss it afterwards. You get content that you won't see on the channel right there on Patreon. Join us over on our merch store. We'll eventually, I'll make a new t-shirt. It will happen, I promise. And uh, any and all Super Chats, we greatly appreciate. Now, to kick it all off here with some Super Chats and Member Chats, Davish, member for eight months, who's always with us and commenting. He's on Twitter. And thank you, Davish. He said, not even excited for Tales of the Empire. Looks like hot garbage. Hashtag cancel Disney+. Plus. Well, that's actually our opening story. DA, have you seen the trailer yet? I, I did see the trailer. Okay. Um, yeah, so yeah, we'll talk about that. I have not seen it. I am looking forward to it. Definitely okay. looking forward to it. So thank you very, Davish, for that for that member chat. Uh, very much, sir. Rogue Sarge with a big $50 super chat. Holy cow. Hail everyone at EBN. I will be on vacation next week, so I'm doubling up this super chat to make up for it, brother. <laughs> wow. Oh wow. my gosh. <laughs> Salute. Very Thank scary. you, Very Bobby. Rogue Sarge, who is over 500 subscribers, still doing it, going yep. to the therapy, getting his, going to the therapy, going to the range for some gun therapy. Love it. Keep doing your thing, Bobby. Um, and I would be interested to know what Bobby thought about the Tales of the Empire because I know he watched it. He was over on Graber's channel a few moments ago with Donna. I would like to know what they think about it as well. So let us know. And we appreciate that very much for a very generous $50 Super Chat, my friend. Speaking of very generous, X-Wing with a $49.99 Super Chat. Chewy, we're home. Miss y'all and love y'all. Have an incredible show. I'll be lurking. You know, I actually thought about X-Wing today uh, after he tweeted and I, I messaged him 
and I thought about, I just reflected for a moment about him, his fa- his wife, their little girl. They just had a baby not long ago, a little princess. And it, it hit me. My little princess just turned 16 today. Wow. Wow. She turned 16 wow. years old today. Awesome. And she is in hell right now at Disney. <laughs> She's at Disney. Oh. <laughs> there she is with her driver's license. Oh, Scary. She's like, oh. she's like ghosted Uh-oh. out on this picture, like on the camera, but she's not yeah, yeah. pale. She's very tan. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> but uh, she got her driver's license. She's at Disney on a on a a uh, a trip uh, with her organization in school. Uh, nice. Mommy's with her them, so I could be bad tonight. Oh. Um, <laughs> but uh, happy birthday, sweetheart, X Wing. Thank birthday. you. Yep. Thank you, X Wing, for this forty nine ninety nine super chat. Keep lurking. We can't wait to have you back. And I cannot wait for the Acolyte to drop so I can go on X-Wing's channel and say the things that I really want to say. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, X-Wing, very much, brother. Um, Graph Web with a $2 super chat. Hashtag cancel Disney Plus, the most consistent man on YouTube. You could buy his T-shirt on in our merch store. Thank you so much, Graph Web. You are awesome, and that thing's going to get trending again. It is. Thank you. And Debbie Young, Mama Bear gifted five EBN memberships. Thank you, Debbie. Welcome to our five new members. Please, five new members. Let Debbie know that you appreciate that membership. 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 Check out our perks. See what it's all about. Throw some emojis up, members. We appreciate it very much. I'm going to get on Nick's ass and make him put some new emojis out there. Mm. In, in the very near future. All right. We need a bald-headed wristman and a DA. We have a Simpus. There's still a Dart Simpus out okay, there. Okay, all right, good, good. There is one hanging around. Right. I say cancel that Mexican Iron Man. Yeah, we can get rid of that. Yeah, we can get rid of that one. <laughs> yeah, nobody cares. <laughs> all right, everybody. Well, that catches us all up. Thank you so much. We want to honor you with your with your uh, generosity, memberships, um, Super Chats, so we are your Echo Base Network. This is for you. All right, all right. We are going to get into our opening topic of the night. We got tons of topics. If you are looking for a Star Wars show, you came to the right place. But if you're looking for more than a Star Wars show, you're definitely in the right place because we're going to be in Star Wars world for several minutes. And then we're going to move on to a bunch of other topics, starting right here with Tales of the Empire. So we knew that Tales of the Jedi, the the animated series that Filoni did, did quite well, actually. The first time around, it was Ahsoka and Dooku, was it not? It was. And those were good, for the most part, especially the Dooku arc. I really enjoyed that. And I was actually hoping that we were going to get a Tales of the Sith. I know a lot of people were kind of predicting that one. Not that it won't happen one day, but we get Tales of the Empire. Very Interesting surprising. choice of word there, mm-hmm. I got to say, uh, knowing what I know. But here's the trailer, folks. Let's uh, let's check this bad boy out and weigh in. This is my first time viewing. Now, I got to say, I like the opening cinematic. I mean, it's pretty good. Right there. All right. That's definitely the Empire. Here we go. Why do you seek Imperial favor? Years ago, my people were all but destroyed. That's Morgan Elsbeth. It is. I loved seeing the Clone Wars era droids, by the way. Oh, wait. My anger gives me strength. It is that strength I offer the Empire. Offer accepted. I'm here to present you with an opportunity, Barris. So Barris 
Ophi, yep, and Morgan Elizabeth are the That's two correct. main. I guess we call them protagonists. It's their space. Of, You're going of, off of how they did uh, Tales of the Jedi, right? There was two. There was uh, Dooku, and then there was um, Ahsoka. Yes, right. And protagonist so, doesn't necessarily mean good guy. It means main guy. Yeah, the main person character. Ag- yeah. And the person going against the main character would be the antagonist, which yep. typically is the bad guy, but not in this case. Here we go. Just be glad you're not a Jedi anymore. Your path is set, Morgan Elspeth. I will fulfill my destiny. This is a very long trailer, I gotta say that. Two minutes. Two minutes long. Oh! Mercy only breeds defeat. Grand Inquisitor, he he doesn't have an egghead. It's before he fell off his diet, Coach. Ah, yes, yes. The Boba Fett happened to him, too. And it's it's Jason Isaacs. It's Jason Isaacs' voice again. Good, good, good. I will help you overcome this weakness. Attack! Mm. Is that believable? Depends. I mean, he was a Jedi. against. He was a Jedi Temple Guard, so he was pretty accomplished. That's hard to swallow, right there. But okay. You said the Empire would help to change things. That looked a lot like the Ahsoka show. Everything yes. comes at a cost. She got old real fast. That's her on Corvus. So this is a picture <laughs> taking over uh, in, in Corvus. Ah, yes, yes. My world has been burned. What? Yes. So, so if you remember the backstory. Um, Palpatine wasn't about the Night Sisters, so originally he instructed Dooku to send Grievous to wipe them out, and apparently All we're going to get a part of that here. So this is a flashback to Grievous. Doing okay, that. all right. This is prior to his death, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. didn't bring him back. No, no, no. They're not bringing. Okay, him back. all right. I was about to be like, "What the freak, man? No, no. Another one?" No. <laughs> <laughs> Since I was a child, you cannot stop what has begun. Now you must face one final test to join us. It is time you meet your new master. There's Mark. Here he is. <laughs> Long live the Empire. All right, it's badass seeing Darth Vader, but new master? Well, the master, he's the master of the Inquisitors. I mean. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause because if if Darth Vader is her master, that cheapens Darth Vader even more. No, there he's a master of the Because she went out like a bia. But did you see Merrick there? So they had Merrick lined up. You know, the one who we see later is the green cloud of dust in Ahsoka. And, oh. he, was there, and he was standing next to the No, uh, I did not see so that. If you go back a little bit right before right before they bow, just back a little bit further. All, so there so right there is Merrick. And right next to Merrick is the other hawk-faced um, Inquisitor that Ahsoka beats in Tales of the Jedi. Wow. Nice catch. Merrick, who we thought was going to be... Yeah. Well, at that point... I just don't even to, remember who we thought he was going to be. We thought he was going to be... At, so many people thought he was going to be so many different things, right? Ezra yeah. was a favorite of mine. Everyone thought yeah. Merrick was... He was nothing... Yeah. He was nothing. Yeah, literally was nothing. All right. So, okay. Initial reaction. It's cool seeing the Empire stuff. It's cool seeing Vader. It sounds like Star Wars. 
it looks like Star Wars animation. It's probably going to be good because Filoni excels in Star Wars animation. However, Barris and Morgan Elspeth, why do we have Filoni's females again? Wow. I like women. Don't get me wrong, but they have made Star Wars a girl brand. Well, and also I think it, 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 and I'm sure it has to tie into Ahsoka season two somehow. One of his movies. There's, I don't think Barris's inclusion is going to be random, and we know we know what happens to Morgan. I don't I, care about Morgan. I you don't know. either. Barris and I never is cared cool. about that character. Yeah, Barris has a backstory. Barris was part of the Jedi Knight Order. This Morgan Elspeth, come on, man, what are we doing? Listen, it it could be worse, Coach. It could be it could have been Riva, and it could have been a Grogu, <laughs> and it also could have been. A, I, I am really surprised it wasn't Riva, and there was no Grogu. I really expected them to give us some Grogu here before we go. Everyone goes into Grogu withdrawal. But this is Tales of the Empire. It's going to be about. I, I yeah. know, but I'm I'm saying before this came out, yeah, right. When we still thought it was Tales of Jedi season two, this okay. Tales of the Empire is totally out of left field. Yeah, I don't yeah. understand. Like you, you should have come up with a better word than Empire. But you couldn't say Sith to all go right, opposite. So, all right, so so make it know? Empire. So so make it make it Empire. Why not make it about? I don't know, Darth Vader. How about that? Well, I, we got to do Morgan. Man. Let's, Morgan, get rid of the, Morgan. let's get rid of the Empire. Can we not have a Luke Skywalker? No. Half season. Coach, what are you talking about? Man? They got have, an agenda to push. Hell, I'll take Wedge. I'll take Porkins. <laughs> coach isn't understanding yet. This is about the message, Coach. Okay? It's about oh, no. getting Bob more Iger female not, They're not doing that. For more female protagonists and representation. On screen, that's what this is about. Okay, that's what yeah. this is all about. So, and also, there was a rumor <laughs> floating around for a while that said they were doing something else with Inquisitors, right? And and yeah. then other people said there was going to be animated Maul, and there was a lot of there was a lot of scuttlebutt about something that was Sithy or Empire related from from a a, a, a series perspective. I'm thinking this is probably it. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's just uh well it, it's, it's, it's like it's, you said, coach. It looks like Star Wars. It sounds like Star Wars, okay? But like with Star Wars in Lucasfilm's track record as of late, I mean, there's little to no excitement for this. Nobody's buzzing about I mean, some people clearly are buzzing, but it, there's little there's little excitement going on when it comes to these projects, even with the animation that Dave Filoni can do. You know, yeah. it's, I'm just kind of like, I don't really care. And then I don't care about these characters like that, especially Morgan Elsbeth. I just don't care. We already know we already know what happens to her. So what what's what is this? What are we doing here? You know, I just don't I, I don't see the purpose. He's the guy in charge and he's telling his Star Wars stories. Yeah, that, that's it. He's only telling his the stories that he wants to tell. It's yeah. kind of like when you were a kid and you got all your toys, all your action figures. The ones we want to play with are the ones that he neglects. Yeah. And and, and also, they're the coolest toys in the toy chest. Yep. And, and he got three credits. Filoni has three credits on this series, created by supervising <laughs> director. And executive producer. So this is clearly his thing, lock, stock, and, and barrel. Um, it's yeah. six episodes, it's six shorts. They all drop on May the 4th. It's unusual. There's a lot of things about it that are unusual to me. The timing of it, the content. It makes me wonder if this was something they had potentially planned to put out before Ahsoka. You know, so many, so many things got resequenced. Yeah. As a result of strikes and different things and this, that, and the other. Maybe this wasn't finished and they finished it, they had to finish it later. I, I the biggest complaint I've seen from, from people other than what we've already talked about is it just seems it seems weirdly timed, right? In regards to oh. like, 
Like you yeah. guys are saying, Morgan Elsbeth. I mean, I know we get a lot of things about people that are dead, but she just died. I mean, it's still very fresh. And, and it's Tales of the Empire? Well. Morgan Elsbeth? Because she. The she Empire was, era? In Well, yeah. remember. Mary when Sophie? She That's was Clone the, Wars. Well, but but Barris Offie was taken prisoner at the end of Clone Wars, and we never knew what happened to her. Yeah. Right? So, again, there seems to be a reason why we want to tell the story about her entrance into the Quisitoris. Does she stay there? Yeah. Who is the antagonist in this series? Is it the Empire? Right? Uh, it, 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 I would not think so. It's a difficult... So, so what's the conflict? Right? At least when we talked about... No clue. Seeing Ahsoka and seeing Dooku, we understood what their conflicts were. Here we've got Elsbeth trying to seek revenge, oddly enough, on the Empire. She doesn't realize it because it was the Separatists that did her in, but it was really the Empire. So she joins the Empire to get revenge on the Empire, right? Weird. But we know she stays loyal through Ahsoka because she's the whole reason why Thrawn comes back. Yeah, and then we got Barris Afi just trying to survive out of a prison cell, getting drafted into something that she might not know of what she was getting into, and we don't know what happens to her, at least not yet. It's poorly named, is it not? Da, I, I don't like Empire. any piece of this thing. I'm not, I'm not excited about any of this. But yeah, I don't know what you would call it other than Tales of the Empire. Like I said, if you're trying to do some reversal of Tales of the Jedi you know, tales of the dark side. Like, I mean, you know, what would you call it? You know, there's really nothing that you could, you know, you kind of have to stick with the empire, you know, yeah. that's kind of the, yeah. So dark, to me, yeah, dark, it's not a good side, name. Jedi and dark side, at least would have been a better play. The but then problem, people would be calling it tales from the dark side and then they'd have the crypt keeper yeah. memes going on. So yeah, that, that wouldn't work <laughs> yeah, either. Yeah. That. Yeah. You remember tales from the dark side? Yep, uh, I sure so, do. But, but um, yeah, you would have that. So it, I guess Empire is the best they could come up with. Look, these guys are not creative. OK, <laughs> you guys should be used to this by now. These cats have lost all creativity. We're just going to dive back into the same storylines that we've done time and time again. I don't know. I don't know what story they could tell uh, regarding Morgan that I'm going to be interested in. Um, Barris, maybe a little bit, you know, OK, what happened yeah. to Barris? You know, OK, yeah. cool. All right. She's I, more I appealing that way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I agree. Definitely. Morgan Ellis, but, if you if you gave me a list of a hundred Star Wars characters and said rank these in order of what you would like to see in the next entry. tales of season, Morgan yeah. Elspeth might be one hundred. <laughs> Is she even on the list? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, on the list, right? <laughs> exactly. I'd rather see a season about a damn mouse droid. You know, yeah. Even though I have to I would have been, you know what would have been cool if they had did Balin. You know, you want to yeah. show a backstory, show Balin's backstory. Don't make there's, sense here, DA. There, there's a I'm rumor. Sorry. I'm sorry, I'm making sense. I'm sorry. There, 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 <laughs> there, there, there talk is, Star Wars. Be fantastic. Yeah, there that would have been awesome. There is a rumor out there right now that does say Balin and Shin will be in this. Mm, right. Okay. But but yeah, but, I mean, to, to, like to make it about Balin and show some of his story, because out of all the characters that we got out of Ahsoka, he was probably the one people wanted to see more of. I mean, across the board. And you would think, OK, let's let's dive into that. You know, let's dive into what our audience actually wants and cares about. Nope. Here's Morgan Elsbeth. Have at it. You know, it's like, come on, man. I'm just <laughs> can I, you know, I, we, we can actually just stop this whole conversation right here. Because Mike just dropped the mic. Yeah. There it is, folks. I mean, do the characters, do the characters you want, but throw us a bone and give a mission with Luke, Han, and Leia in it. It's animation. Yep. Yep. People have been it's asking. not for like this. money. People have been begging for this, and they won't do it. They won't do it. And and Rispin, you said something about the 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 irony and the timing of all this. You talking about the shareholder meeting? They wanted to wait till that debacle ended I, until they released this trailer? I don't think so. I I think I think they wanted to do something for May the 4th, but they ran out of options. And probably somebody looked at the calendar and said, Well, shoot, May the 4th is a month away. 
let's put out let's put this trailer out and give them a month we've already told them about the acolyte so let's put this out what i said about timing is it feels like a show potentially that should have happened before ahsoka i'm just guessing i haven't seen it mm -hmm. right but if you're going to tell a morgan elsbeth backstory wouldn't it have made more sense to do that before people encounter her in ahsoka yeah. where she was already very confusing even if all your other because their only backstory for was one episode of Mandalorian. Yeah. 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 yeah you built I, that character up. You make that character, you know, feel important or more important. Yeah. So then by the time she does show up in Ahsoka, we have a little bit better sense of who this character is. Yeah, absolutely. It makes sense. Okay. Again, we got people, three people here making sense. Disney's not gonna listen to us, yeah. though. I'm sorry, unfortunately, yeah. man. Well, and, yeah, and, that's you know, crazy. As much as I as much as I love the Empire, it was accidental I wore this shirt today. I have to tell you what was missing for me from that trailer. The Empire didn't feel sinister. They felt very sinister in the last few episodes of Bad Batch, especially the last two we just got. I mean, downright, downright mean and nasty. Yeah. Here I'm like, all right, so they're training her to be an Inquisitor. Maybe maybe they'll show us something that makes us care about why that's a big deal. But again, they've already they've already kind of ruined some amount of the Inquisitors already in Kenobi. So I just go back to the timing of these things of this series. Very specific. It just feels weirdly timed. Yeah, John Graber. Uh, oh, you guys would pick it apart and hate it, talking about if they gave us a Luke, Han, and Leia. Yeah, I, I don't know about you, John, but I hated Chapter 16 of The Mandalorian. Uh, <laughs> I, in fact, I hated the first two seasons of The Mandalorian. And by God, I hated the Clone Wars Season 7. I just hate everything Disney Star Wars does. No, John, I'm just not a consumer and suck it all up. And and I and, you yeah. know, I think I articulate what I like and what I don't. So, uh, but, you know, see it through your rose-colored glasses, Uh you know, okay. Uh, but anyways, um, let's see here. What we got next? Do we have? We do. Yeah, you want to cover these? Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Pirate Dark Tanave has joined the EBN family. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for joining. He joined as a Padawan. That is freaking awesome. Thank you so much, for being here and joining your EBN family. We greatly appreciate that, man. Uh, welcome. Uh, let's see here. We got Donna Hergen Rether. I'm so sorry. I, got it. I <laughs> got it. Uh, member for two years. I'm excited for the story of Barris Ophi, her and Vader. Hopefully, Anakin is still mad about what she did to Ahsoka. Always wanted her story. Morgan, I don't care. Yeah, I'm slightly interested in Barris. She has a much more compelling possible backstory. The things that I know, I don't care about Morgan Elspeth. That's just uh, yeah. what you know. What the fact that they're doing a Morgan Elspeth um, in this animated show, the fact that they're doing that basically proves to me what most of you already thought, but I wasn't sold on it. That Ahsoka season two is coming. Mm. They're doing it. Oh yeah, I they're doing so. it. I have been like reluctant to to go all in on that because it just doesn't make sense to me. With 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 the numbers dwindling, with more and more people leaving the franchise, mm -hmm. and we're going to be talking about that a little bit later. But you know, hey, what do I know? Uh, but yeah, I'm with you, Donna. Uh, that's the order in which I see it as well. X Wing member for. Two years and eight months. My goodness. I'm yep. just shocked and surprised we're finally getting females in Star Wars. <laughs> Seeing as there's never been females in Star Wars before, this is truly a benchmark <laughs> show. Hashtag the force is female. Just, oh, just, just, just one more thing, by the way, on Barris Offee and Vader, right? So if the story ends up being Barris Offee ends up figuring out Vader is Anakin and Anakin kills her as a result of the fact that she figures it out, then I'm going to be annoyed, right? If, if that's the way they culminate, because they didn't leave on good terms, right? I mean, they, they left, you know, with the whole interaction over her framing Ahsoka and yada, yada, yada. Right. So, so there could be a bit of a grudge there. And now all of a sudden, you know, Vader's, you know, her, her boss, right. If, 
if it ends up just if he ends up if that ends up being the antagonist, then for me, I'm I'm going to be a little unless they do a really good job of it. I'm going to be a little annoyed. Okay, I, I hear you. All right. Well, thank you, X Wing, for sending in that member chat. We appreciate it very much. Um, I, I'm very sorry. I got to quit clicking. I, I we skipped one. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Me and my monkey member for two months. Yes, I do get tired of Iger winning. Talking about the thumbnail that we made for the show tonight. So yeah, uh, it's a short term win. He won a battle. That doesn't mean he's yeah. winning the war. Disney's yeah. losing the war. I don't know if they they even recognize it, unfortunately, but they're losing. The oh, war. I think they recognize that they're losing. I hope so. <laughs> they, they pulled out all the stops that they could pull out to get this minor win, in my opinion. They Some keep minor having win. to pull out all. The, it's amazing. Yeah, hey, we we got to announce this on our website. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just like they did everything every they could. Every trick just, you could imagine, yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah. And and the consumers just consume away and think everything is great. But I don't think the consumers here. are following them no more, man. I mean, you've seen, I don't know if you guys have seen the fallout from the uh, the female Silver Surfer. That's not looking good at all. Oh. All right. This trailer oh. that just dropped, everybody's just kind of, it's like a low key, like kind of feel to it. It's like you guys are putting stuff out. Nobody's feeling it. So, yeah, I don't think that Iger's winning. I think he's slowly losing. I think yeah. that's how I would look at it. I agree with you. Kathleen Kennedy is worse than AIDS with two pounds. <laughs> have you seen the Yavin Escape fan film? I have not. I've seen it. Neither have I. Rispin, tell us about it. Um, gosh, I watched a bunch of them all together. I may be, I'm probably getting mess, mixed up with one that was about the Sands. But I think it was good. I think I liked it. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. I believe Star Wars Theory was watching that the other day. Um, I have not watched. My time is so limited. Uh, yeah. I just haven't had an opportunity. But I'll go check them out. I, I like fan films. That's good stuff. So that's uh, Star Wars to the core right there, as far as I'm concerned. So thank you for sending that in. Kathleen Kennedy is worse than eight. Uh, Pirate Dark Tenave with four ninety nine, one of our newest members. Uh, no less. Oh, no, Leia, no Han, no Luke by Disney. Hope your stocks drop like a rock. Ooh, like a rock, <laughs> like a rock. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got you. Uh, yeah, totally with you. They got to honor what Star Wars really is for the fans that are demanding it, and they continue to not do that for some reason. But, uh, thank you very much, my brother, for sending that in with 499 Super Chat. And then we've got Nighthawk. This is the one. This is the one that we accidentally skipped, by the way. Oh, good, good, good. Thank you for finding that. Nighthawk member for four months. Hail Echo Base and the DA. I really appreciate you guys for everything you do. Never stop, never stopping. That's the plan. Yep. It, it be getting hard sometimes. No, we got especially, it. We're be especially right. when we were like, we're Star Wars only. We don't talk about anything but Star Wars. My gosh, man, it got tired. I mean, it got tiresome. Of, I mean, dang, train wreck after train wreck after train wreck. I mean, can I talk about something that I'm actually having fun with? So, uh, yes, uh, we have expanded, but we will never stop. And we will continue to bring you the Star Wars news and be authentic and not consumers as well. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nighthawk. And then Veritech 2000 has joined. That's freaking awesome. Uh, he is our newest Jedi Knight member. So thank you so much, Veritech. Uh, we appreciate that very much, my friend. Welcome to the EBN family. Now, what we've got up next, uh, just real quick, I I want to speed this up a little bit because I want to get through as much of this tonight as possible. Zoom it. Zoom it on. Okay. Zoom, zoom, zoom. The Acolytes Daphne Keen. If you don't recognize Daphne Keene, she was the young girl that played Wolverine's daughter in yes. Logan. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, which was a terrific movie, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, the Acolytes' Daphne Keene praises the showrunner's broad understanding of Star Wars. Huh? 
Now I read the article. I read, I read her comments. She gave no specifics about Leslie Headland's broad understanding of Star Wars. So, so she's referring. So I'm sure she, obviously she interacted with Headland directly. Right. But there was oh, a yeah. series of articles back in the day, you know, way back now, empire, one of those um, total film, and it it does appear that Leslie Headland is a Star Wars fan. She almost seemed like a Star Wars nerd in regards to the things that she liked and what she came up through and, and all this stuff. Now, how, how that's represented in this series and what she does or doesn't um, pull from, I don't know. But I, I do think she's a fan. You know, the thing that bugs me about the Acolyte is it's actually a really freaking cool premise. Mm-hmm. You know, now I got to say, Star Wars seems hell bent on telling the the bad guys tale and making the bad guys look like they're not bad. I mean, even all the way down to Tuscan freaking Raiders. Oh, I know. Okay, but this premise is pretty cool. What hurt it for me is obviously the showrunner her past, her comments, and her casting. Mm. And you just have to assume this is going to be the message. This is going to be more of all that stuff. And the Star Wars in the Acolyte is going to be second. And that hurts it. So I don't know, you know, and, and Leslie, when Leslie Headland was asked in an interview recently, which Star Wars movie was her favorite? She did not answer the question. And she had an opportunity right there to show the fans that she knows something about Star Wars. But she didn't. She said, they're all just yeah. Star Wars to me. They're all Star Wars. Of course they are. Come on, man. Stop it. <laughs> well, Give I, us a real answer and I show know. us you have a clue. So, so, she, does, so she that, can't, she can't, she can't show you that she has a clue because she does not have a yeah, clue. Yeah, because she hires writers that know nothing about it. So, so, yeah. guys, so, guys, I that was a clip of one interview. She's had other interviews where she has spoken eloquently about Star Wars. Really? I don't, and I don't know, I don't know how that will or won't be represented in the series. My biggest concern is it's a Sith focused story. Mm -hmm. There was no Sith in the freaking teaser. There was one person that you didn't even see with the red lightsaber that you might assume is a Sith. The whole rest of it was Jedi, 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 Jedi. Every every flavor of Jedi you ever would have seen. I'm like, if it's really a Sith-focused story, why is there no Sith, number one? And number two, Empire's doing a big expose on the Acolyte coming up in their May issue, and they put a snippet out there, another exclusive interview with mm -hmm. Leslie Headland. And all it said was the same thing again. Oh, it's 100 years before the Phantom Menace, and I can't wait for I can't wait to tell the story of what happened to get us to right. the point where the Sith came back, and you know, blah blah blah. I'm like, I'm like, how many times can you tell me nothing in these interviews? And, uh, I know. And so, mm. and the episodes are really short, right? They're 25. The episodes minutes. are short. They're 30 minutes, like. <laughs> You know, on average. And That's I how all when, the uh, Star Wars shows are, though. There's exactly. a lot. Exactly. Yeah. They, man. The Bad Batch have nothing. The Bad Batch have nothing have right now. Episode. When you have a 30 minute show that could be an hour, mm. that is an indication to me that maybe you have a relative lack of story. Right. Yeah, they don't have good characters. And if you, they don't and have, if you have a relative in. lack of story, what do you create? Yeah. Filler. Yep. I listen. Yep. I just started Netflix's Ripley. They're doing a they're doing a mini series that on their take on the talented Mr. Ripley. It just dropped today. Eight episodes. Every episode is fifty minutes. That's amazing. Right? I I do not understand why for the most premium tentpole thing that you have you dick around with 25 minute live action I, I don't understand it i mean are we not is it just me 
are we not all at the point where when Star Wars releases a live action episode, as soon as it drops, you want to know what the runtime is? Yeah, pretty exactly. much. That's what yeah. that's the first thing we look at now because it's been so disappointing. They don't have any stories to tell. They don't have anything interesting. They don't have good characters. They have good characters. They're not working with them, okay? And then the stuff that they're creating, you know, the story that they told with Ahsoka. Ahsoka was a very paper-thin, very paper-thin character. Um, I don't know what to expect from the Acolyte other than, like you said, this thing just looks terrible. You know, the characters that they're giving us. What did they put in there? Return of the it's the return of the Jedi. And they're yeah, saying, I Yeah, return of the oh, Jedi. I, I, I was bro, like, oh, bro. oh, it was so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to throw that in there because you know, we're gonna have oh. a whole lot of Jedi on the screen. Again, it's gonna be flashing lights, it's gonna be jangling keys, it's gonna be all of that kind of crap. It's not gonna be riveting storytelling. I, I because how can it be riveting storytelling when you're only giving us a 25, 30, 30 minute episode? You know, when it could be an hour long. You know, I, I mean, I just don't see well, it. I don't and, see and it. Somebody, somebody put in the chat about the Andor episode lengths, right? Not only were they 40 minutes-ish, yeah. but three of them worked together to basically give you an hour and a half to a two-hour, to four two-hour movies, right? Because there was 12 episodes. Again, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it just shows it can be done if you have a story, if you have someone yeah. who knows how to tell that story, produce it, finish it and put out something that they that they feel like represents the best possible product that they can that they can do and then we get 25 minutes of whatever this is going to be well right? look uh, let's flip the script real quick every taking everything into consideration we just talked about I'm really looking forward to the show. <laughs> I know. I know oh, you man, are. This is going to be the reasons. most fun. <laughs> oh, this is going to be the most fun that I've had with Star Wars since I've had a channel covering, man. This is going to be awesome. I'm, I'm absolutely looking forward to this. <laughs> DA, you've got to go back and watch our uh, our Book of Boba Book Fett, of Boba Fett. Oh, and, our, and our Kenobi reviews. Brutal. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm looking. I, I'm man. Oh, it oh, is boy. YouTube gold. <laughs> and we were getting drilled in the comments. Oh, yes. uh, well, I bet you guys were. But, but you look, were, you, but you were probably 100% cases, right on everything cases, you said. Yeah. The majority are against us, and then they all come our way. You know what it yep. was, Coach? The episode, what was it, episode four? As soon as the Vespa showed up, all of a sudden, everyone was like, oh, no, this is the worst. I can't get the, what this Tuscan thing was a waste of time and blah, blah, blah. And this and then all of a Coach sudden. Coach and Nick were right. Me and Nick already knew. <laughs> this is I all trash. That, I hated that series from the very beginning. It's one of the few things they've put out that I've been like since the very beginning. I've been like, I've been like, I'm I'm really not liking this. And I think these like, things are worth the like rewatch. This. this is the best thing they've ever done. I'm like. I'm like, I don't like it. <laughs> let's let's it was revisit such a those departure. train wrecks. It was such a departure from what we were left with with Mando season two, the very oh. ending. It was such a departure. And then they bring out the trailer, right? They bring that little, or not trailer, that little snippet at the very end of Mando season two. And you're just like rubbing your hands together. We're going to get like gangster boss Boba Fett. You know, taking over Tatooine, going after all of the syndicates, and you know, oh, this is gonna be. And I mean, mm -hmm. we got, we got the worst thing we could have possibly imagine. Man. Exactly. Kitchen droid, kitchen droid. Do you know who I am? He's oh, in the kitchen. God. He's chasing him around the table. Do you all remember the kitchen table? Oh. It was like a do 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 going around man. the terrible. the drive. It's like, what is happening? Yeah, that was right, man. <sighs> Inside Jabba's palace. As well, and it's like, wow! You just you just made the inside of Jabba's palace Looney Tunes. Yep, Tom and Jerry. Yep, yep, I'll, sure I'll, did. Okay. All right, just just one final comment before and I'll leave Book of Boba Fett. He goes all the way back to the palace. Boba Fett does. They need help. He needs to come back. They need to win the battle. He goes all the way back to the palace where Slave One is. What does he do? He comes back riding on a rancor. Why do you not come back in Slave One? You went all the way back and you came back on the freaking rancor. Why? I can't even remember that. 
Yeah. He did. Come back on the right core. Oh. All I all I know. And they give us Pee Wee Herman bucks. Those are both great. Those are both great. <laughs> All right. Well, look, up next, speaking of Star Wars on a decline, there's a new report that comes out that suggests Disney has quietly, without saying anyone, making it public, announcing it or anything, after wall murals, advertisements, everybody in Paris excited about it, Galaxy's Edge is coming to Walt Disney World Paris. They have now scratched it. And it is not happening. Wonder why that is. And the most well, interesting part of that story is not only did they scrap it, but it's been replaced by a new rumor that says instead they're going to do something brand new that's going to be Mandalorian focused. Yes. And they're with, gonna a, with that... a Mandalorian ride, maybe. Yes. Yes. But now so, those okay, hold things up. I'm are not... maybes. I... I'm not all into the parks and stuff like a lot of cats. So what what was it that they are scrapping? Like what is it that they, they were, were gonna going to Galaxies? Do? They were going to put Galaxy's Edge in the um, entire okay. Star Wars theme park. Yeah. They were bringing okay. it to to Walt So they Disney basically World just built the Galaxy's Edge in in Paris. Okay, and but they're, they're scrapping not. that. Mm -hmm. Nah. Okay, got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. Not happening. Interesting. Well, yeah, it's because it does terrible at the. I mean, nobody cares about it at either you know either park where it's at currently. So it's like why. Throw it in a third park. Yeah, if they don't care about it in Orlando, they're not going to care about it in Paris. Hell no. Well, are they going to? And do they want to spend all the money to make that Rise of the Resistance ride again, which is all Kylo Ren, you know, and escaping and Finn and uh, uh, Poe rather, and all this? At this point, it, why? Why bother? You, you, you can't really use the sequel trilogy, can you? You can't use the sequel trilogy for anything anymore because no. nobody cares about it, and so you you can't build upon it. That's one of the reasons I think they were trying to go back to this Ray. Okay, we can maybe get Ray in here. We can somehow fix the sequel trilogy and make the sequel trilogy usable. They can't use anything from the sequel trilogy right now. That is an absolute dead corner of the Star Wars universe. And yeah, so you got to move to the Mandalorian or something else if you want to do something going forward. Yeah, 100%. That's right. That's right. All right. Risman, uh, up next we had... Oh, not all Star Wars news is bad. The KOTOR remake okay. is back on the books. Yeah. Okay. It's still so doing it, it. It might actually be happening. According to the CEO of the of the gaming site, they're still working on it. It is not canceled. It is not going away. Uh, it's a work in progress. So that's a good yeah. update for people who, who care about that. You know, you know, you know what we, we call that, Coach? We call it in development. Right. That way, that way it can just take that's as long true. as it's going to take. Yeah. Just come out whenever it's going to come out. Just tell it's in. You know, that's so funny. I was sitting at the lunch table at work today and there's a young guy. He's like 25. And he started talking about when when he's able to retire. And I said, well, bro, first of all, you know, when I'm dead, <laughs> I'll be dead by the time he retires. Uh, I'll be dead. But you remember this conversation, and we just started laughing, uh, you know, and, and the reason I say that is because Star Wars, like, they have shelved and canceled so many things that have been greenlit and in development, and it's just still sitting there in Star Wars purgatory. Yep. Because Disney doesn't have the, the company, and, and they're not the only ones. They don't have the fortitude it looks bad for their business to let people know something's not happening. Yeah. We're not doing it. That project is canceled. We're, we're not going to move forward with that project. Very rarely are they open and honest about those things, especially Lucasfilm under Disney. 
And and oh, yeah. now what what do we get? We get a month out, a month and a half out announcements of things that are actually happening because they know those are happening. A la <laughs> the acolyte, a la Tales of the Empire. Have they've done more things that they've not told us about than they've told us about. Correct. Right. Yep. Correct. Yeah, they announce yeah. stuff very, very randomly, and then they just quietly don't talk about it again. <laughs> you know, it's funny. One of my favorite images ever from the Brady Bunch movie. CEO sure, yeah. Bob Iger says Disney job isn't to advance any kind of agenda. And then they got the Sure Jan meme. <laughs> sure Jan. <laughs> I, I love that. So uh, the scoop. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Did you see this, Risman? I got to yes. bring Nick in for this. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, ready. Yeah, the him. master of disaster. Feel the bass. You hear? Oh, it might help if I unmute my microphone. It's there every time. Like you're on a streak. Like it's like. The, the thing is, <laughs> if, so I'm, I'm always listening to my audio through my earbuds that's connected to my microphone. And if I have it unmuted, I constantly have like a static wind noise in the background. Oh, so I always mute it. And, and every time I jump on the stream, I, I always forget to. Every it. single time. Yep. CEO Bob Iger, Nick, says Disney job is not to advance any kind of agenda. And here's specifically what he said. Uh, let's see. Um, our job is to entertain first and foremost. And by telling great stories, we continue to have a positive impact on the world and inspire future generations, just as we've done for over 100 years. Um, asked, asked whether Disney would stay out of politics, CEO Bob Iger said that the company is not out to advance any kind of agenda, but rather is focused on entertainment. All right. So that's what he said, but here's the video <laughs> that, that leaked. This is so, yeah. dude, yeah. get yeah. ready, get your finger on the no, no button. Like I love Disney's content. I grew up watching, you know, all of the classics. They have been a huge, like, informative part of my life. But at the same time, like, I worked at small studios most of my career, and I'd heard, you know, you hear whispers. Like, I'd, I'd heard things like, oh, you know, they won't let you show this at a Disney show. And I'm like, okay. So I was a little, like, sus when I started. And, but then sus. my experience was bafflingly the opposite. Here it comes. Remember what Bob Iger said. No agenda here. This no agenda. Purely, this is purely entertainment. Check it out. Of what I had heard on my little pocket of, like, you know, Proud Family, Disney TVA. Um, the showrunners were super welcoming. Meredith Roberts and, like, the, the our leadership over there has been so welcoming to, like, my, like, not at all secret gay agenda. And so, like, I, I feel like I felt like it was, I mean, like... Maybe it was that way in the past, but I guess like something must have happened in the last, like like they were turning it around, they're going hard, and then all that like momentum that I felt, like that sense of I don't have to be afraid to like let's have these two characters kiss, let's in the background this like I was just wherever I could, just basically adding queerness to <laughs> wherever I could. No agenda here, folks. This yeah, guy's just a politician, a and he's bold faced lying to everybody. Yeah. Well, and and the next article was, "Woke is overused. We're not woke. We're just telling. We we are just here to entertain." Blah blah. I'm like, how you, that's it's so many things he said in that. People CNC. misuse that word. They don't know what woke means. Yeah, and we, if they did know, we know exactly means, what he means. Not us. <laughs> Come on, Bob. Ugh, what a joke. That's like all them jack legs that comment on our video that's like, this is clickbait. No, fool. You just don't like it. It's not clickbait. The video is exactly what the title says it is. You just don't like it, so you call it clickbait. Your mom's clickbait. Yeah. <laughs> well, they did click it, didn't they? I literally <laughs> said that to somebody he today. Did say in the comment earlier today. <laughs> Uh, you said your mom's clickbait. You did. Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> what was it on Twitter? No, no. YouTube comments. I'm slaying them, mother. Uh. <laughs> I ain't playing. I ain't playing. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Even Nick is like going on. Nick. <laughs> I'm killing them. Mike Tyson's fighting. I'm knocking people out. 
<laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. They don't know nothing about no, you know. Agenda? What woke. agenda? <laughs> yeah, what agenda? <laughs> I'm adding queerness anywhere I can. And they're like, they love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's funny, man. It's and and what's what's even more funny is just like literally two hours after he says that, uh, they drop the news about the female Silver Surfer that's coming uh, to the MCU. You know, it's like, oh, we're gonna you know uh, do a gender swap on the so, but no agenda, folks, no agenda whatsoever. It's like, all right, cool. <laughs> isn't, it like, isn't it like his girlfriend or his wife? Isn't it like the wife of the? It's it's the the character is yeah the character is uh oh uh, uh she's. Like the woman that uh, Norn Rad was in love with, that okay. he was willingly sacrificing. He sacrifices his entire existence, you know, gets covered in silver and becomes the silver surfer to save this woman and her planet because he loves this woman. And they're going to take that story away from him and they're going to mm. give it to the woman that he loved. You know, so they're going to eliminate the male, you know, hero all the way out. You know, they're going to go. Oh, we got to make the female the hero. That's what they're going to do with that uh, whole storyline. It's again, man. Bob Iger is just a gaslighting fool. All right. He can't stop gaslighting. He can't stop. He can't help himself. No, there's no agenda. Bob knows damn well there's an agenda over there at Disney, man. He yeah. practically. He speaks it and oh no, nah, no agenda, no agenda at all. Okay, I don't know what everybody's talking about. Woke, they don't know what the word means. That's like, all right. <laughs> at some point in time, you just laugh. All right, you just gotta laugh. You know, if you're what? buying this, I mean, sheesh, I got like some property I want to sell you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? <laughs> Even going back to Morgan Elspeth, this is nothing more to me than an opportunity for one Filoni to have more about the characters that he has made, wants to talk about. Yeah. Two. His wife, we know her comments and the things that she wanted. They get to focus on the Night Sisters, the witches of Dathomir. They get to do all those story arcs. Those are the things that they're interested in. That's the stories that they want to tell and focus on. So what better character to bring in than Morgan Elsbeth to be able to do that and give them that outlet? Yeah, That's it. And that, think, about, it. Like, think about this. And you said it. Like, throw us a bone. All right. Or somebody in the uh, chat said, just throw us a bone. This is a little, what, six, 10 minute shorts. You know, it's like it's nothing. It's an hour of t content. You couldn't give us just like a tiny little scrap. You know, it's like, no, we got to dedicate this little Tales of the Empire show. We got to dedicate that to the agenda, too. It's like, See? give us something. Give us See a little it? something. DA, and, you know and, and we would have been, oh my God, we're getting Luke and Han and Leia. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to watch this. You would have at least thrown the audience that, you know, I mean, you would have thrown us something. They're giving us yeah. nothing. DA, you DA, know, they can't even give us scraps. Don't pick at the duration of Tales of the Jedi. It's going to be longer than four episodes put together of the Acolyte. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we'll get 90 minutes plus. But I'm just saying, Richmond, man, like you can't give us nothing. Like you can't give the fans that care about this, that built this franchise up to make it as big as it is. You can't give us nothing at all. You got to just this is this is just disrespectful to the fan base. You know, we're already going to have to sit up here and deal with the acolyte. You're talking about the Ray movie directed by Charmino Bay Chinoy. It's been nothing but bad, bad bad for star wars for the you know with the exception in my opinion of andor but even some people don't are you know not excited about andor but like regardless of that you couldn't give us a little something star wars lucasfilm kathleen you couldn't give us anything even with this tales of the empire these little animated shorts not even that huh yeah we get nothing right now so yeah it's nothing to do but just destroy this crap man let it burn okay let it burn i'm a, I, i'm i can't wait to the acolyte comes if you're out, gonna man. give me tales of the empire why don't you give me tarkin's life story yeah like, why don't why don't yeah. i mean i mean if we're reaching for something that's super empire focused that yeah. man, give me krennic's life story if it's gotta be disney era for goodness sake they'll <laughs> never they will never give us something from the age of rebellion ever no, from the original trilogy yeah. era, they yeah. will never. You can't. <clears throat> Nick's Nick's been talking about it for for years now. No, they can't tell us anything about the Bothan spies. They can't tell yeah. us that story. But there's so many things that they could do. They can't tell us about something that happened between Empire and Jedi. 
they i mean so you say the age what is the age of rebellion is that start the original trilogy original trilogy okay so that's what you guys yeah. call the age of rebellion i've it's always been in arguments with people about when does these ages start like does the age yeah. of rebellion start with you know andor or the rebels or you know like that's those the series? age of the empire that's still the age no, of the they, empire mm -hmm. they've okay. changed it all they've changed it all now that's, the yeah absolutely it's changed. The Jedi yeah. and the rain yeah. they, disney they, but, added 12 things to it one day okay yeah <laughs> they made it much more complex so you can't argue about it now because it's just totally disney yeah yeah yep yep very true all right well gentlemen uh got a couple super chats we're gonna we're gonna that's gonna be the end of our star wars talk unless you guys send in some super chats uh up next something that i can get behind sigourney weaver okay um that was a terrible joke coach terrible Man, she was looking good in Galaxy. <laughs> I was. was <laughs> wow. Joke. Spaceship Vampire, remember for 11 months. God bless Echo Base Network. Stay classy, everyone. You I'm trying. Stay classy, San Diego. I'm trying. I'm in rare form tonight. <laughs> but thank you, Spaceship Vampire. It's all Rispin's fault. Uh, oh. Debbie Young, $1.99. Super Chat. Matt, are they still doing Andor? Oh, yeah. They yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, it's in post production now. If I had to guess, that'll be their May the fourth thing next year. I bet you we'll get. Yeah. I bet you we'll get the the launch of Andor because it'll be ready by then. I'm I'm almost positive. So that would be my guess for for May fourth. And year. I look forward to it. Uh, there's going to be some really cool. I would suspect Easter egg tie-ins to A New Hope, yeah. being able to see the Yavin Moon Base, um, K two S O. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some yeah. awesomeness. Um, mommy Mothma, don't forget Mommy Mothma. She's I, the. I mean, she's the reason that the New Republic failed. She's just not a good leader, bro. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Aurora Uplinks, what is up, brother? Has become a member yet again. That man can tell some stories, and he's got ideas. Brother, thank you. Welcome back to your EBN family. Joining us as a Jedi Knight. Can't wait to see you on the next pop-ins soon. Um, let's see. All right, Nick. McFly. What up? Um, Alien 4K. Have you watched it? Uh, no, I have them on Blu-ray. I don't have it on 4K. Rob, mm. Robert Meyer Burnett talked about Alien in 4K the other day, and he he said it blew his mind. Yeah. Really? He said it's so clean. He said it was unbelievable. And he went into it very upset that they were removing the grittiness. This is, he went from one extreme to the other. He was so dead set against it. And then he said he watched it, right, Coach? Mine was blown. Yep. So, I say all that to say this. I suspect the 4K is what we're going to be getting back in theaters in April, later this month. Before Alien Romulus drops, you're going to get an opportunity to go to your local theater and watch Alien. We're talking the original here, not Aliens. Oh, Correct. that would be freaking awesome. Elliot 1979 yeah. is what it is. Yeah. That is a must go watch for me. 100%. Oh, I don't yeah. think I've ever seen it on the big screen. Oh, I, I don't think I have either, actually. The only yeah. one I've seen on the big screen is Covenant with Nick. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And this one releases yeah, April. I'm definitely the, in theaters for this. This one releases April the 26th, and I bet you it'll be for more than a day in more than 13 places. I think this is going to have a really wide release. I, really I definitely want to go see this. Well, let's go together. Yeah. Yeah. This time definitely. show up on time so we're not like running to the theater. <laughs> yeah. You know. Did I? Uh, Dude, no, you're always I... late. You're late for every. Matt Tuween, tell him he was late. Me and Matt Tuween <laughs> done finished our meal when you walked oh, in. Oh, yeah. That, that's only because traffic was bad getting out of Leave Birmingham. Early. <laughs> well, I, I couldn't because I was right in the middle of. Uh, I was right in the middle of uh oh. You uh, got more excuses crap. than Bob Iger. Oh man! Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 he pulled the Bob Iger card on you, Nick. <laughs> Coach be throwing cats up under the bus with no abandon, man. Damn. 
<laughs> Risman, keep rolling. Uh, let me go refill my drink, please. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so we're both we're all buying this, right? In the chat, I don't, I haven't been paying attention in the chat. Oh, I, I definitely deal? am. Go go yeah. see Alien in the chat. Throw up a one in the chat if if you've if you're gonna go and see Alien on re-release April the 26th. It starts. I bet you it'll be at least for a week. Throw us up some ones if this is an interest to you. Um, Romulus a, takes place between Alien and Aliens, right? I think that's correct. I okay. Think that's yeah, correct. I think so. Okay, and, uh, so. and I I love the the design how they kept it like the original movie like it's not yeah. like all futuristic like in Prometheus yeah. like like what where did this technology come from you know mm -hmm. they didn't have yeah. this in Alien <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I, the, the trailer looks amazing it yeah. did. I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely looking forward to Romulus um but yeah I, I'm I'm seeing this because I think I've seen every Alien in theaters with the exception of this film. And it, yeah, the trailer felt very alien. So um, yeah. I am with y'all. We've got some, we've got a few ones, some maybes, some very, some very ones. Um, Donna's, it's not, looks like Donna's a definite no. I know Alien's not everyone's, uh, Alien's not everyone's cup of tea. Uh, Bobby's going to go see it. Um, like I said, I hope, I hope it does well. I hope it does well. Um, let's see what is next. All right. This one up. I don't think this one's going to be a big surprise. Um, it was a pretty big, it was a pretty big movie, but here we go. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get away, um, Denny. Denny's got his next. He's got his next gig. It looks like um, probably first. He's adapting a book. Um, Annie Jacobson's Pulitzer, Pri Pulitzer Prize finalist for Nuclear War, a scenario. Boy, that sounds like a happy movie, right? <laughs> it sounds like such a, a feel-good movie. It's based on a book that just came out. It's also by Legendary. Legendary is the is the, actually the the production uh, house that put up um, uh, fronted all the money, I think, for Dune Two. And within this article, they confirm that they will be partnering with Denny for Dune Three as well. So again, I don't, I don't think that's is anyone surprised, right? I mean, the movie no. Dune Two is still killing it. Yeah. Um, but but this tells me it won't be right away. This tells me he, he kind of sounds like he kind of wants a Dune break, which he said that, right? He said he wants the script to be perfect, and you know maybe he wants to do something that's. I don't think he wants to be remembered for only Dune, even though we know he did other things too, right? And so it sounds like this feel-good movie about what happens after we have a <laughs> nuclear problem is going to be first, <laughs> and that Dune 3 will be be further down. Can't but, wait. Need more yeah. Dune. So, yeah. So it's going to be like, what, five years off or something like that? It's going to be five years down the line? No, we've got just... that. That Ben Gesserit series is coming soon, though, right, Coach, on HBO? So we've got more Dune stuff coming to us between yeah, now okay. and And I hear they're working on an animated series as well for HBO mm. of Dune. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah, I agree. You know, but, you know, uh, I know that the DA stepped away for a second, but just you guys be aware that when you go to uh, the DA's channel, before Dune Three drops, he'll be on there trashing it. So just <laughs> <laughs> you're so bad. So <laughs> be bad. be away and not a believer. Not a not a believer. Okay, um, boys, this did you know that the Silver Surfer has a vagina? No oh. man, I did not know this. This this is news to me. Yeah, uh, the Silver Surfer is now Ruth from Ozark. I yep. loved her in that. She's a great yeah. character. She pulled it off. Yeah. yeah, she's good, right? The actress is good. Yeah. She is straight up red neck in that show. Yeah. We might be related. Oh, no. But uh, Silver Surfer, guys, is this not symbolic of everything wrong with these big studios? Uh, How could you? Look, it, it, here's what makes it even worse, okay? I, I'm going to admit to you, a lot of you guys in chat are going to know a heck of a lot more about this character than me. Yeah, I know nothing about it. Galactus, oh, Galactus. is a cool 
freaking character. I don't know a lot about him. I know he's huge. I know he's powerful. That's an intriguing character. Yeah. So that is going to be the main antagonist in the Fantastic Four reboot. But then you're giving us her as a silver surfer? What are you doing? I don't know, Coach. They kind of lost me as when they cast Pedro as whoever they cast him as. I have Mr. to tell Fantastic, you honestly, man. I yeah. have to tell Reed you honestly, Richard. I wasn't super hyped for the movie to begin with. And as soon as they said he's re I was kind of like, kind of, you know, I'll go and see it, but I'm not. Like, Pedro's man. overexposed at this point, man. Pedro Pascal's no overexposed, doubt. man. So no yeah, that was a bad move. And then on top of that, now you had th that whole casting, by the way, went over like a nothing burger, man. I don't think anybody really cares about this cast. I like the guy that play that's gonna play um mm. uh Ben Grimm. Yeah. I like him as an actor. I think he's a good actor, and I'm looking forward to see how he does with the thing. Outside of that, I could care less about anybody else in this thing. I was looking forward to seeing who was going to play Doctor Doom, uh, because they were talking about either it's going to be um it's going to be Killian Murphy or yeah. um ah oh, shoot I'm drawing a blank. What's the guy from um um uh, Mickelson's brother uh, Mads Mickelson? Mads. They said it's going to be Mads Mickelson or Killian Murphy, and I'm like I like both of those actors, so I'm good with that. But then they announced this, and I said, I'm out. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. It should be – Dr. Doom should be the villain. It shouldn't be Galactus, okay? Yeah. They should okay. just be, hey, right. we're going straight to Dr. Doom. That's what we should be doing. They've done it. They've never gotten Dr. Doom right in any of these Fantastic Four movies mm. anyway. So it's like, mm. okay, get Dr. Doom right. Give us a good Dr. Doom versus the Fantastic Four and go. And they can't and you, do it. They you you know who it. they should get to play Doom? It's it, it's Ben Mendelsohn. He is the biggest Doctor Doom fan on the world in the world. Uh, oh, Every is he? I didn't know that. Hundred percent, hundred percent. It's okay. it's his favorite villain of all time. He's so, one of the greatest comic villains ever, man. It's like, and they've never gotten him right. Da character, mentioned. Go ahead, Nick. I was just gonna say the character uh, that they cast her for. They cast her as that uh, wasn't Sh Shayla Bell or Bell or Shayla Ball. Ball, yeah, yeah. Shallow ball. She, she was not ever actually a silver surfer in the comics. Well, was she, 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 she's like one iteration of one comic. Mm -hmm. Um, the they make her the silver surfer. Um, I, I can't remember the exact storyline, but they make her a silver surfer for like a comic on like one comic. And now, oh, OK, she, they did it in the comics. And so now that they've done it in the comics, now everybody has permission to run with it. And now she's going to end up replacing the main mm. silver surfer in the MCU. Mm. That's how I look at it. And that's stupid. You know, now so you, you mentioned, D.A., ahead. that Pedro Pascal was overexposed. Yeah. Question. For everybody on the panel, what would Pedro Pascal's IMDb page say show if he was Caucasian? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Oh, he would have a resume that would probably say Pizza Hut. Oh. <laughs> I, so you don't think wrong. he's a good actor? You don't think he's a good actor? No, no, uh, no. He's a fine actor. He's okay. a fine actor. Fine, but he wouldn't get jobs unless for his his. Uh, he wouldn't be what he is right now. If yeah, um, because yeah. Bob Iger Bob Iger told us earlier tonight they want to tell stories that appeal to everyone. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think my, my hardest sell for Pedro Pascal is the appearance is he sort of broke out after pizza, pizza. after the Mandalorian, and I'm like, anyone could play the Mandalorian. As we've seen ever since, <laughs> well, I thought his breakout role was Game of Thrones. I thought that well, was the one. He great was character, Oberyn Martell. Great character. But what did yeah. he do after Game of Thrones before Mandalorian? He did he Equalizer did Two. Oh yeah, and he did. Yeah, he did Equalizer Two. Yeah, but Wonder Woman. You're. I take that back. That was after Mandalorian. So it's, I'm kind of like I. I just don't get it. I don't get how we got from Game of Thrones. My to man, Mushroom Cloud, everywhere. Like, yeah, he's all over. He's everywhere. Yeah, yeah, he's too exposed, man. It's like everybody's gonna get sick and tired of this guy. Like, oh God, Pedro Pascal again. Good Lord, can you guys yeah, find right. another actor? Like, God, get this man some depression meds. He sounds depressed. 
Yeah. <laughs> Narcos. I see the chat is saying Narcos. That, that oh, yeah. Narcos. Movie. Yep. Yep. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's been in way too much stuff. And it's like, I get it why Disney wants to use him because, you know, he's already doing Mandalorian. So it's like, hey, might as well just use him over here with this thing and just keep him on set all day long. But I, I would have picked somebody else. He's not Reed Richards at all. Like, that's yeah. the worst Reed Richards you could possibly imagine. It's just he doesn't fit the character at all. He's in, so. some, he's in at least one or two other movies even before this because when I saw them, was he finished with Last of Us? Was he not? Then there was mm. another article that said he's headlining someone else's movie that was just getting started. Yeah. Right? I'm like, geez, Louise, he's in something else as the headliner. I mean, how many more movies? Pedro Pascal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone in the yeah. chat said he has a really good agent, right? I was like, and must be. <laughs> I don't, I don't it must know. Must be a really good agent. I guess so. Well, all right. So, guys, this next one, a man, I'm like, I really like this dude. I think he's a good, wholesome, honest guy in the business. I didn't realize he's as jacked up as he is. I didn't realize that he has to go see a therapist. I didn't realize that he suffers from PTSD and he fights depression and he's very bipolar, open about bipolar. it. And it's yeah, because bipolar. his terrible exp bipolar. Mm -hmm. It's because of his, I'd hate to see him on a bad day, by the way. I wouldn't want him coming after me. Hail to the no, I'd be gone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I'm talking about oh, my, my man here, Alan Richson. Yeah, he's uh, awesome. He's one of my new favorite actors. He's great guy. Yep. He is publicly here, begging for the role of Batman. Give it to him. Yeah. I I I'm 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 good with it. If you're gonna give it to anybody, give it to him. But I'm tired of Batman, dude. And I love Batman. Mm -hmm. Besides Wolverine, Batman's my favorite comic character. He's my favorite DC by far. Yep. There ain't even a comparison in DC. It's so Batman. why are you tired of him? Man, all right. You grew up with, uh, you know Nolan what? You grew up with was, all of the Batmans, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. It's like, like when, when, uh, Tom Holland's done with Spider-Man, which I, you could, I mean, he can go. I don't care. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't care, but I really liked Toby. I really liked Andrew Garfield was my favorite. Mm. Um, Tom Holland's fine, but my gosh, after Tom Holland, let it rest a while. We just had a who's the guy that was the, in the vampire movies? I did golly, uh, played Edward. Um, he was the Batman, oh, Robert Pattinson. Yeah. Oh, Pattinson. yeah, the movie was just okay to oh, me. Yeah, it's I not like worthy that. of another one. He needs to keep his shirt on if he's moving a table, coach. They, Please don't yeah. <laughs> they need to leave Batman alone for a while, man. Let it sit there and rest and bring it back. It's just you talk about uh Pedro Pascal, they can do the same thing with fictional characters. Oversaturation. It's too much. We just finished one of the great trilogies in in The Dark Knight. Just a just a few years back. Let it rest, man. Now I now here's the problem. I love the dude. And I'm not saying yeah. I wouldn't be all about it if they gave it to him. But I think there's other... You know what? Hell, let him be Nightwing. Nah, he's too old for Nightwing. Yeah, yeah that's Nightwing's true. That's head. true. He's that's way true. too old for Nightwing. Like let him, look, Batman oh. is money in the bank, man. Batman is money in right. the bank. People will always go and watch Batman no matter who's playing him, no matter okay. what the stories are. They will always go watch Batman. As proven by that last Robert Pattinson, that thing made almost yeah. $800 million. So, yeah, so, they, they, they always going to run with this I, one. I'm a sucker for the comeback story. Mm -hmm. I'm a sucker for when Jordan came back and played with the wizards. Yeah. I'm a sucker for George Foreman regaining yeah. the heavyweight title at 43. Right. I'm a sucker for Mike Tyson fighting at 58. I'm a sucker for Jack Nicholas winning the masters in 1986 when he was over the hill and done. I love the, when the legends come back and that is precisely why the dark Knight returns is the greatest comic story ever written. Ever. Batman's in his 60s. He's retired. No one's seen him in 10 years. He hadn't put the suit on in 10 years. He's old. Mm -hmm. 
and he has to come back and save Gotham one more time, and it damn near kills him. He has a heart attack. Mm. Make Alan Richson look a little bit older and give him the role. I'd be all for it. I Like I said, I, I love him as an actor. Well, you know, he's got another movie coming out totally not like Batman, right? The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. <laughs> I'm looking a, forward to that, man. Yeah, yeah that looks coming good. out in a couple of weeks with, with yeah. Richard and some others. It looks like a Henry quite Cavill going in expected. that one ad. That's what's going to be awesome. Yeah. yeah, I'm all in. If he plays Batman, I mean, they got to pick a younger looking Batman because they're building out the cinematic universe with James Gunn. So it, it, they won't go old with him. Um, he's going to be a young Batman, um, you know, probably in his thirties, you know, I think Alan Rickson is like 40 or something like that. Yeah. He would be a good Conan. Too. I've, seen, I've seen this one floating around too. If you want to, yeah. they're rebooting everything else. We're going to, we're getting the 56th matrix movie. Why can't oh. we bring Conan back? Let Alan Rickson. We haven't even talked about that. It's not even on yeah. the agenda, but <laughs> why the last one did terrible. It wasn't I know. Good. terrible. I, I'm about to be the unpopular opinion, but I'm actually looking forward to that because oh, of the guy no. writing it. No, 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 no. I trust the writer and the director, which is Drew Goddard. Drew Goddard's doing it. I trust Drew Goddard. Okay. He was the showrunner on the first season of Daredevil. He wrote uh, Cabin in the Woods. This guy is an amazing writer. He wrote a uh, World War Z. I love everything this guy does, man. This guy knows his stuff. He's a great writer. He's a great director. So, yeah, I'm all on board because of Drew Goddard. If anybody else was doing it, I would be like, no, I'm out. But because it's Drew Goddard, I'm on board. I am looking forward to see what it and the Wachowskis are not going to be involved in any of the writing, anything. So none of their ideas are going to be in it. I think this thing is going to be one amazing. Of the, one of the Wachowskis is like producing or something, right? So uh, I just, yeah, I mean, I, okay, yeah, I take it back. They're producing, but they're not going to be writing, directing. It's going to be one of the Wach Drew. Wachowski brothers, right? <laughs> I've forgotten who. Oh, boy. Let's not don't, go get there. Us, don't get us. Don't get into trouble, Nick. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I. I'm just, I just hope it's not Matrix for the modern audience, right? I, I'm just, if you're going to tell me a Matrix story, I wasn't a huge fan of the last one either, by the way. Tell me yeah, a Matrix no, story. I don't think anybody really It was did. a one-time watch for me. I watch and it. it I, and I, and, I, and, I, and if I watch a Matrix movie one time, it was a bad movie. Yeah. It can't be the Matrix in me watch it once. Wasn't that the one that had Doogie Howser in it? Wasn't Doogie Howser in that I don't movie? even remember. As the therapist, I think I'm rem I, I got some yeah. PTSD from that movie. <laughs> it basically made it to where the second and third movie never happened. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And by the way, The Matrix Reloaded is better than the original. Oh, speaking of hot, unpopular opinions. Hot take. Hot take. Yep. I saw those movies in the theater and loved it. <laughs> okay uh guys what if i told you that there was a show that's coming back out it's that they're dusting off after decades but the showrunner is one of them lgbtq plus ia people and he's very he's an ideologue okay uh, it, that would make you very hesitant would it not Sure. Well, that's X-Men 97, and so far after four seasons, or four episodes, it's damn good. Yeah. Yeah, me and Coach have really been liking it a lot. So have you guys seen the fourth episode yet? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The okay. first half of it, I, I, me and Nick, uh, do you not subscribe to our Patreon? Well, I, I do, but being back in the office, I, I'm, I'm watched a little bit more closely. But the reason why I'm bringing it up is as someone who never saw the original series, I had to look things up. Right. And when I looked it up to understand those two stories they were telling, and then I yeah. thought to my first reaction was, oh, Coach and Nick are going to love this. I mean, this is going back to all the lore and everything from the original, blah, blah, and right. so on and so forth. But I was totally lost. I was like, what in the hell is going on in this episode? Mm -hmm. so lost. Are you talking about the, the Mojo Vision part? Yeah. And yeah. then also at the end with the with um forge and and the demon thing and all this i'm like I, what are we doing I, it's not that i didn't like it i was just really confused just really i understand <laughs> uh it was like pink floyd the wall alice in wonderland trippy the first half of it 
with the mojo vision. Like mm-hmm. I need some good drugs and watch that again. Like it was, yeah. uh, that, that was, that was a trip, but it was awesome. And it, there were so many callbacks, Nick and I, man, when they went to they, they, their side scroller nineties video game and Nick was like, make it, make that game right there. Yeah. I'll play I, it. I would buy you that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, guys, so far, X-Men 97 has been a treat. Yeah. And there's a much bigger conversation here. Chat, you got to let us know what you think. It, Rissman said this a few times to me on phone conversations. And it, when he says it, it, it just really resonates with me. And it, I think it, the, when I really noticed it the most was with Picard. Mm. So many people, because of Picard season one and two, especially season two, they did not even watch season three. They left, they refused. And in Rissman's words, it was such a treat Mm. Picard season three was such a treat I was watching Star Trek again I really was and I don't want to deprive myself of that one day maybe Star Wars does that maybe we get another Mandalorian season two a Clone Wars season seven Something that the majority of the fan base loves, not just a minority, a small sliver of it. Um, so X Men is that for me, yeah. man? So far in four episodes, now look, it could go south any moment. They got six episodes left to ruin it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they usually go off the rails. You're right. But they, if they're going off the rails, they're usually doing it by now. Right? They usually get There's us for nothing. two episodes, and then it goes off a cliff. There's been nothing. And people will say, oh, there was the scene with Morph and Wolverine in the shower. That was nothing. I watched it. Yeah. That was it nothing. Really was. People, like, he was... It's not like Morph walked in and said, Nick's in the shower and I walk in and say, can I help you with the hard to get spots? No. It would be like me pulling out a baseball bat and asking Nick, can I help you with the hard to get spots? That's what Morph did. He showed Wolverine's adamantium claws. He said, can I get the hard to get spots? He was joking around. It wasn't anything to do with any type of agenda messaging stuff. Nothing. Nope. So my opinion, some people will disagree, but psh, good luck. I mean, we'll have that debate, I guess. Um, this show so you guys are liking it, good. though. It's good stuff. I haven't oh, seen it I, yet. I, could, I couldn't be happier. Yep. Okay. Right. It's right. so weird, DA, because we're talking about a show that we loved when we were 14 years old, and here we are watching it again. Yeah. And it's a continuation and, of it. It's and with bizarre. Disney- in the in that woke weird writer, uh, like we were expecting just a pretty much an utter shit show, and yeah, it's been pleasantly surprising, you know, that it hasn't been like that at all. Uh, so yeah, and, and as someone who had no background in the original, who's going in, yeah, I must have watched at least some of the original. I know I'm a little right. older than you guys, but just as someone who went in understanding basics of the characters, I found it. Very easy to watch, yeah. and kind of, I'm I'm yeah. into it. So okay. so uh, this is exactly what I'm talking about. And my buddy Aaron Bubba Ratliff, love Aaron to death. You know, and I respect his take. I respect his position. Don't get me wrong, but here's what he says: I have no reason to watch X Men '97. Everything Marvel has done on Disney Plus has been bait and switch or trash. There is Not nothing wrong. to make me think this is going to be anything else. And here's my only response to that. You're depriving yourself of a treat, in my opinion, thus far. Yeah. But that's okay. That's your take. You don't want to watch it. That's fine. I'm glad I'm watching it. 
because yeah. it's been fantastic so far. Yeah. And you don't have to watch it on Disney Plus. You can watch me and Coach watching it and talking about it on Patreon. And it's cheaper than Disney Plus. Nick, X Men 97 so far is what episode seven should have been, right or wrong? Yeah, no, right. Yeah. I agree. Mm. Yep. Okay. They they've done it the right way. And we had no reason. Like, look, I gotta call a spade a spade. I gotta I gotta be you know, straight about it. I got to play it down the middle. Yeah. The showrunner was what he was. He had an only fans. He gets fired. We're expecting this show to be no different than what we're expecting the acolyte to be. And it ain't been that. Well, and yeah. also, and also he seemed to have two other checks and balances, right? With the other writers and people who clearly care. I'm not saying he did or didn't care. But but putting aside the concerns that everyone had about him, I don't think these other two writers let him get away with the funny business, right? Because I yeah. think they want they love this franchise, they love this thing. They brought back the voice actors. They're like, we're not going to go down with this ship. Yes. that's my opinion. Oh, the voice actors are back for the most part. The characters are right, and you know, I, I said this in our in our review on Patreon the other day. Again, shout out. You know, plug for our Patreon channel, guys. If you've not on our Patreon, what are you doing? It's five dollars a month, and you could watch all of these things with me and Nick and get exclusive stuff, audiobooks, documentaries, you name it, it's there. Go to our Patreon. Um X-Men was really good about taking a singular episode and making it about a singular character on a journey, on a quest, their backstory, and they did it with all of their characters. Well, in this last episode, they did Jubilee. Mm. Rissman, she was my least favorite character growing up. I hated Jubilee. Yeah, I could see why. I could this see why. was so good. It. I liked Jubilee better in X-Men 97 than I ever liked her in the original series. Yeah. You agree with me, Nick? Yeah, 100%. That's mm. crazy to me. 100%. <laughs> Well, if me and Nick both agree on that, it's legit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the the first part, the end of the episode was a little like, eh, but all in all, like it was a really well done episode. Um, yeah. Especially the first half of it, man, was well, freaking awesome. And, and look, so that leads me to say, you know that the Wolverine episode is coming. You yeah. know that the Gambit episode is coming. The Cyclops episode is coming. Beast is coming. Yep. Maybe Iceman makes an appearance. He was one of my favorite characters um, until what they did to him in the comics. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, everything so far has been really good. Now, Rob sent in a message right here, uh, a question. Where did that go, Rob? I saw it. I saw it. I know I saw it. Oh, there it is. Is Cyclops respected as the leader? Mm. Hathaway, it, but it, it, Wolverine yeah. never respected him no. in the original. No. So that is, we are seeing Cyclops struggle with his leadership duties. And yeah. well, he's had some jacked up stuff happen to him. Yeah. He has. But, and you know, very notice jacked up in this. Well, they, but they've really positioned Magneto, right? More to me. Yes. Because in this last episode, both Cyclops and, and Gene were off UNing yeah. it and doing some other things, which allowed them to. To do this other character focus or whatever but for me if i would have had to pick the person that seems to be the most leadery of this crew it, it seems to be magneto which i know sounds weird he's uh, the leader right now cyclops would be the leader on mission mm. you know what i mean yeah i get you um but yeah and it's weird seeing magneto as the member but nick and i both theorize that professor x will be back before oh. the season ends. Okay. Yeah. We. I. I mean. I could totally see them teasing. Um. At the very end, him coming back, Magneto going back to being a bad guy, and basically that's how season one ends. Then going into season two, it's back to the X Men with Professor X and Magneto with all his of. Uh, of the other villains and stuff right back to same old, same old, like the original show. 
Yeah, because yeah, season two is done already, right? And season three now has been greenlit. I always I hate to use the word, but I really think, again, it, I think it will probably happen unless it goes off the rails and people are like, oh, no, forget about this. Yeah. Um, and so on and so forth. So I think they have a plan, whether it's Professor X coming back or not. They clearly had a plan for this for this series reboot. And it shows that somebody put cohesive thought into this. And like I said, when I researched what I didn't understand, I became very impressed because what I researched and then putting what I saw, I'm like, wow, they really went and, and twisted some of this stuff and did this, that, and the other. And and I'm like, I'm like, for somebody who is grounded in the lore, it would have should have been a treat. Um, just goes to show it can be done. It can yeah. be done. Uh, yes, it definitely can. And I, here's what it's done. It has made me. Oh no. Freaking love X-Men so much again. Like I'm a kid. I am buying the Wolverine second edition mint on card <laughs> 1993. I am getting it and it's wow. relatively inexpensive. You could get it for like 50 bucks. <clears throat> uh, that's going in my display case and I'm never freaking getting rid of it. Mm. Uh, that's one of the best action figures ever made of one of my favorite characters ever made next to. Yeah, um, definitely. So yes, that is a must. And if the show wasn't good, I wouldn't be feeling those things. Mm -hmm. You know, I would be. So, you know, they're pulling it off. Now, we're going to also, let's discuss this. We talked about Spider-Man, or Batman, too much Batman. There has been rumors, there has been talk about Sam Raimi doing Spider-Man 4. Mm. And he wants to do it. But he gives a big update saying no. He is currently not working on it. And he was also asked if he was working on any Marvel projects, because there was also speculation that he was working on Secret Wars. He said no. He denied. And he said, but I would do either one. Marvel just needs to call. Guys, would you like to see a Sam Raimi-led Spider-Man yes. 4? The yes. rumor is that Toby and Andrew will both be in the film. That's what yes. they want to do. I'm not percent. Hundred percent in. Count count me in. I mean, ever since um, No Way Home came out, I mean, I I pretty much been been waiting for it. Like I'm yeah. like, th this is the time to bring it out. Uh, no so, doubt. Why wait? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they literally should have greenlit it as soon as that movie blew up. They should have greenlit it and announced it to get more hype. Around. Well, they had to focus, Nick, they had to focus on Madam Web, right? They couldn't get distracted. Yeah, by <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Hey, <laughs> what a joke! Uh, Did you see it, Nick? The hell no! I was not. I still haven't seen it, it either. <laughs> um, wow, man! Did you see it? <laughs> I liked it. I knew he. I knew he. Really? Did. I did. Wow, you're the only person that I've heard. In the on planet Earth that like that movie, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Pretty I much. think people look. It was an average movie, average movie, but there were some really good parts and a lot of pretty ladies. All I know is even the actresses didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's if hard. the if the actresses in it are trashing it, hard. <laughs> so Look, hard. that gives Coach got to say um, this. She got daughters. She got to say this type of stuff about yeah. it. <laughs> I the thought movie it was, was garbage. My my daughter, my daughter did like it. She did like it. That's why I, 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 I said, man, yeah. Yeah, Coach, you got to say it. I get it. I got a daughter too. I understand. Look, everybody in chat's <laughs> like, what the heck? Look, it, I. It, <laughs> it's the first of these think, superhero movies. I movie think there's a lot of people on nope. YouTube. Nobody is that, ever trusting your opinion ever again. Oh, but the no, they no. <laughs> they know they know they're gonna get my opinion, though. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I don't create an opinion based on what's going to get clicks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nah. This is what I really think. It ain't ever clickbait. It's what I think, baby. <laughs> okay? It is when I don't like it, Coach. Yeah. Then it's clickbait. Your mom's clickbait. Oh, yeah. not again. <laughs> not again. <laughs> so, uh, hey, look, and look, what the hell's wrong with me liking a bad movie? I mean, they're called yeah. guilty pleasures, right? Yeah, Everybody's there's a lot of them. bad movies out there that I think, yeah. You're look, right about look, hey, look. I, I'm going I'm to tell you another one. You oh. ready? I've said this crap before. It's been a long time. I thought the first Miss Marvel movie was fine uh, yeah. with, with Brie Larson. Captain Marvel. Yeah, Captain Marvel. Captain Captain Marvel. Marvel. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was fine. It was just an average movie. But man, I mean, God dang. Jeremy made 378 videos. Trash. Red eyes. Mm-hmm. You know, red eyes. Uh, and I get it. I get it. And I'm not saying Jeremy does this at all. I mean, I believe he says what he thinks. But there's a lot of YouTubers and content creators that form opinions based on what they think is going to get them the traction. It is what it is. They so want to say. You think they secretly like these movies? Oh no, no. Oh okay. No. Like they're trashing the movie, but like deep down they like ah, this is all right. <laughs> Rob, Coach Sony says the check is in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, man. Look, I, maybe I need to watch it again. You know, I. But when I went and watched it in the theater, I thought it was I thought it was fine. Now it wasn't perfect. I reviewed it on the channel, guys. You did? It's got like 300 views. Go check it. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> you called me afterwards and, and you're like, should I review it? And I'm like, I was like, well, if you want to watch the review, go ahead. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Look, I asked Rispin, what movie was it, Rispin? I went and watched, and I was like, should I do a review on this? And he said, Well, hell. You did a Madam Web review. <laughs> I did. I did <laughs> oh, what was it? I can't even. Dune 2? No. I can't even remember. I went and saw something big, and I was like, should I do a review? Ghostbusters? I, that's a, that was it. It was yeah, Ghostbusters. Okay. Okay. I asked him, should I do one? He's like, you did a Madam Web review. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't. Anyways. uh. Oh my gosh. All right. Enough about that. So, uh, last thing, uh, Nick, tell us a little bit about this IGN and Uh, uh, Stellar Blade debacle. And now there's an apology of some sorts, right? Oh, yeah. This is a disaster. It just keeps developing more and more. Uh, So, initially, IGN France uh, wrote an article on Stellar Blade basically saying, the whoever created this character was just had never seen a woman and i'm paraphrasing here i don't remember the exact words i don't got it in front of me but basically uh you know has never seen a woman and uh you know that they're just pandering to to the male gaze you know by making an attractive woman character uh and come to find out it was the body scan of the model in the game was actually they scanned an actual supermodel, South Korean supermodel. Oh. And then uh, the uh, director of the game, is ma- his wife is on the design team for the game as well. So she helped with the design of the character. So it was scanned. Uh, a real woman was scanned for the character, and a woman was involved in the creation of the character. Uh, so... Their comments basically just, they got trolled and trashed on. Well, this was IGN France. Well, IGN, the parent company, the main IGN, came out, issued an an apology today. They removed the author's name from the article and basically just put Team IGN, you know, basically is is the article. And and they they changed the wording and gave some clarification. Well, since that, the, the author's, uh twitter page uh they translated the french writing on some of the comments and basically they're saying that uh you know that women were going to start offing themselves uh self deletion <sighs> because they can't live up to the standards of this fictional video game character <laughs> oh my 
I kid you not. This is the way these weirdos think uh, that, uh, you know, people are going to self delete because there's an attractive woman in a video game and they can't live up to that standard. Like, are you kidding me? This is a fictional character. (laughs) It's not real. Uh, It's a video game. (laughs) So it's just been a complete joke uh from the from the time this article released all the way up till today uh and it just keeps going and going they they keep trying to backpedal trying to fix it and they are just getting ratioed to hell and back on the internet uh IGN is a woke uh company and uh but I and frankly I'm surprised that they issued an apology at all to the studio but there were women involved and when they found that out and saw all the backlash they were probably forced to do it they probably didn't do it because they felt that they needed to they probably just did it because to make themselves look better like hey guys like you know we're we're backpedaling here you know leave us alone <laughs> well nick but, yeah. I, I don't know what happened to the author of the article but i'm relatively sure they're very well suited for starwars.com's team they're always hiring oh, yeah that yeah. Sounds, yeah. Like yeah. sounds like they'll yeah. fit right in there <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, when you go look at this Joker's uh profile, he you know, he's 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 got the rainbow bracelet, you know, the alphabet community support uh outfit on, you know, all that sort of stuff. And it's like, bro, like you're a dude that likes uh, you know, shaft and balls. Uh wh- why are you t- talking about women? You don't know anything about women either. So shut up. <laughs> uh but yeah it's it's a complete joke uh but this game is going to blow up pre-order sales because of all this uh have skyrocketed and people are loving the demo the gameplay people are loving it even people that were trashing on it before it came out saying this looks dumb blah, who actually played it are turning around saying i was completely wrong and prejudged this game this game looks amazing uh, and the combat and everything is awesome on it. So pre-sales are going through the roof. This could be another uh, game of the year contender next to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, so yeah, it's it's going to be huge. I got the demo downloaded, ready to go. I just I haven't played it yet. I'm going to try to play it tonight though. Well, awesome. Uh, now hold up. Wait a second. I know coach is coach is up to something. You can always tell when he's up to something. I can tell he's up to something. Well, I think people are going to like this up to something. Thank you very much. We'll be the judge of that. Oh, you'll you'll be eating crow here in a second. <laughs> <laughs> I could I already think I know what you'd be doing. Oh, I already man. know what you're doing. Go ahead and tell me. What, what am I doing? You giving us some uh some gameplay. You're gonna show us some gameplay from Stellar Blade. Better than that. Oh, okay. All right. Something that we've talked about over the past few weeks. I make things happen. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Ladies very, and gentlemen, I'm very scared. it is my great honor and privilege to take something on the shelf very carefully, bring it down to me, Dust it off and give you this. Hey maggots, Sergeant Slaughter here. G.I. Joe sent me on a mission where I'm going around everywhere trying to toughen this world up. We're tired of all this mamby-pamby crap. Cobras don't even fight anymore. They just look at ya. Well, that's what you're gonna get. And you know, I actually snapped when the Baroness got soft and told me she likes the new Star Wars. Oops. And if you had a word from Snake Breath himself, he made a big mistake. 
I wanted him to say The Last Jedi was the best. Say it! Say it! In retrospect, I appreciate Solder making a man out of me. So there I am on mission, in Mamby Pamby Land itself. All these little fuzzy bunnies, they need some toughening up. I am one sick, creative individual. There you go. <laughs> the peeps. I forgot. I love that one with the peeps. That was a good one for Easter. Coast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that was old school. That was out of the EBN archive right there. Yes, that was. sure was, dude. <laughs> it sure was. So, yeah. Thank you. I'll pull back some more of those sometime. Hell, I, I mean, I can still do stuff. It's been a you've minute. Got, you've sur sure got the collection back. I got it. the stuff. So I, you know, but I, I threw my green screen and like all that stuff that I, I used to do all that with. It's, it's all gone. I'd have to remake that, but oh wow, I could do that in 15 minutes. No big deal. All right. Well guys, um, great show. We went over two hours. Uh, we got a few super chats to clear out coach before we wrap oh, it. Make it so. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. one of them. I watched, speaking of make it so, I watched I watched episode nine of Picard season three the oh, other day so again, so again. <laughs> if I'm just in the living room looking for something to watch, just put and it there's on. Nothing on. I default to go to that when they go back to the bridge of the Enterprise. Oh, so good. It's oh, comfort. I'm getting chill bumps thinking about it. Comfort food. Captain yeah, you hadn't even seen it. Haven't. Just oh, watch episode see. nine and don't worry about nothing else. Oh, come on. <laughs> the whole Everybody keeps great. telling me to watch it. I'm going to get it. One of these days, I'm going to get in there and watch you it. You don't need what? season one and two. You just need season yeah, two. Yeah, that's what I've been told. That's just great. don't even pretend like they... The season nine, like man, movies. tears just streaming down my face. Oh, yeah. Wow. A couple of times. A couple of times, tears. Kathleen Kennedy is worse than AIDS. Member for 11 months. My dad <laughs> took me to see Alien in 79. <laughs> Freaking psycho. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Thank you, Kathleen Kennedy is worse than AIDS. We appreciate you even more than your stale muff crumbs. <laughs> Ginger with 10 pounds. Speaking of Star Trek, they've greenlit Star Trek Starfleet Academy set in the 32nd century featuring guest appearances from Discovery Crew. And fans hate it already. They want legacy. Sadly, not only they didn't really... They did not only did they green light it, but they are doing it. This is not just fake green lighting like Disney mm. does. They're actually they're actually making um this series. And I know that uh our friend Doomcock is suffering through watching the last season of Discovery right now. I watched the first episode, it came out, and I have to tell you, it's not Star Trek, but the, yeah. the one thing happens in this episode, they show up on this planet and they're like they're like, you need to go and find my contact, Fred. They're like, Fred, what's Fred's last? This is actual dialogue from the show, by the way. What? Fred, Fred who? And they're like, just Fred. So they show up, and Fred is literally a data ripoff. It's oh. it's doing Android, but it's not data. But they tried to make it look just like data, and this is Fred. Right. And so they have to interact with Fred on this mission. And Fred, Fred wasn't long, by the way. Fred didn't make it. He was there and gone. Wow. Um, but you know, they're praising soon <laughs> or whatever and this sort of thing. But yeah, Fred, Fred the Android featured in yeah. the first episode of this season. How about that? 
Well, I love Doomcock's take because he posted and was like, by God, I started this channel reviewing Star Trek Discovery and I'm going to finish it. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, good for you, brother. Well, and, That's and why the, we're always going to be a Star Wars channel, no matter how big that turd gets. But you know uh, what season five is? Season five is a continuation of a Next Generation episode where they found the the people who created all of humanity and Picard had to team up with the Cardassians and the Klingons and all these people to find to, to, to and they, they've encountered these folks who were the ones that seeded all of creation. So now okay. in this last season of discovery, it's the continuation of that next generation story. Awesome. Very cool. So. Uh, yeah. Heck yeah. That, I mean, Sounds like one episode might be good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll yep. See. All right. We got one more thing there, I believe. Uh, yep. A. Marcellus. Nick, how are you enjoying Rebirth? I put in 200 hours already. Just finishing up hard mode and the brutal challenges. I mastered all materia. So I got right around uh, 160 hours in so far, I think. And uh, I'm on hard mode. Uh, I'm going through the challenges. I just about have all my materia maxed. Uh, I'm only short, like maybe at less than 10. Uh, and it's some of the big ones that's like 10,000 AP or above. Uh, but yeah, absolutely loving the game and loving doing all the challenging stuff on hard mode. Very cool. Awesome. Well, hey, Marcellus, thank you very much. For sending that in, my friend. We appreciate that. Uh, wow, everybody. Um, that's that's about it, isn't it? We did it all, Coach. I, I sure, yeah. sh sure should. I said we weren't going to get to the end, and by gosh, we got to the end. <laughs> yeah, we got well, there. So uh, instead of playing our little outro like normal, I'm pulling something back from the archives one more time. DA, please don't leave. Give me a minute 53 of your life. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to DA. What did you think about my stop motion? Look good, man. I gave it a, uh, I gave it a standing. Oh, well, oh. not sitting. Oh, but you know, I liked it. It was good. Okay. Solid, right. solid work. Cause we, you know, we got you yeah, intrigued yeah. about it. Coach, he gave you about as much applause as Kathleen Kennedy got coming to the celebration. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, everybody, I pulled this out for you. Just remember. Mexican Iron Man is not a YouTuber. Oh, no. Once upon a time, a young man had dreams of glory, knowing that one day he would grow up and make an impact on the world. But he needed a name. He would take long walks in the wilderness to meditate. He sought out the wisdom of elders. He searched everywhere for this name. Then, while eating lunch at the local Chinese buffet, he opened a fortune cookie at the end of his meal. The small piece of paper simply read, M-I-M. -M. Perplexed, the man asked the young waitress, What does M-I-M -M mean? The young woman responded, Well, sir, you are the only Mexican who ever eats here. And to eat our egg rolls, you must have a stomach of iron. So I'd say, Mexican Iron Man. The name resonated with the young man instantly. After a long period of time, and many tacos, Mexican Iron Man decided it was time for him to suit up. But there was a problem. The tacos had a terrible effect on the midsection, and his appearance would not be one that would inspire hope and justice. So Mexican Iron Man decided that he would take on this new challenge to be an example for us all.
<laughs> that was nice. <laughs> There's something that wrong. That was with nice. Me. That was nice. There's something wrong. I forgot about the damn dog at the end. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> he was Golly. getting that burrito, son. He was. I thought it was a Dune popcorn bucket or something. Is that sour I don't cream? Know. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right. Well, great show, everybody. Head over to the DA's channel on Saturday, right? That's right. Saturday, same bat time, same bat channel. Yeah. All right. Well, EBN Nick, cast tomorrow afternoon. Uh, member stream this Sunday, guys. Uh-uh. Sunday. Uh-uh. 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 Apparently yeah, remember there. we pushed it back from Ooh. last Sunday to this one? Uh, remember I told you I wasn't doing Sunday because my wife and child are coming back home? Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, member stream t- uh, tomorrow night. Rispin does not approve. Oh, I, I can't quit. This do it. You got to do it when you guys are available. Yeah. I'll be there in spirit. Mm. Yeah. Is there not a time? I'm going, I'm doing uh, Monkey Man tomorrow night. Monkey Man? What is that? New movie coming out called Monkey Man. Well, Dev you'll Patel. be home. Dev Patel. All right. Uh, tomorrow night it is, members. So we hope to see you then. We'll, I don't we'll know what time. time. Yeah, we'll post it on time. community tab. We'll post it on community tab. Yeah, we will post it on community tab. I hope to see everybody here. We're going to open it up to pop ins right away. Come in and shoot the crap with us. Talk about the channel. Tell us your thoughts. You know, whatever you want to tell us. Uh, direction, give us feedback, anything you want to talk about in entertainment or what's been going on. It's it's wide open panel pop-ins for members. So anyways, thank you guys for being here. Nick, anything else? I uh, don't think so. All right. Well, I said I'm not playing the long intro, so uh, I'm not. So welcome to all of our new members. This video is for you, and we are out. We are you are Echo Base Network. May the force be with oh. you. And uh yeah, like uh everything else. We are broadcasting live from the Echo Base Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Convention <laughs> with the great DA, the DA, that's Derek. Right, that's right. Mexican hey, me. Iron Man in the house. We're outside the uh, live music bar. Where we've done a meetup with Film Threat, Latino Slant. There's Latino Slant. Love the bird from Polly. All right, guys. See you later. That's the best. (laughs) Bye.